I'm Miss Christy, and this was your memory verse, or is your memory verse, for just a couple more lessons. We only have uh, today's, next Sunday's, and then the next Sunday, and then we're done with this unit. So, Proverbs 3, 11 through 12, both classes. If you can recite that verse for me, then I have a CD to give to your family. And this CD has that memory verse on it and 10 or more from the last 50 lessons that we've had together. So um, that'd be great to have in the car. You can sing the memory verses as you're running errands with your families or if you're going on a road trip it's a great way to tuck God's word in your heart. So, besides our memory verse, we always start right off here at the junction with our Bible truths. And these are more ways to tuck God's word in our heart and some of his important words, like his important definitions of some words. And one of those is the word that means God cannot sin and he hates all sin. Who knows what that word is? Yes, that is holy. Yes, shout it right at the camera. You should know these words by now. And because he hates all sin, he must punish sin because he is what? Because God is what? He is holy and he is just. Yes, this is where we get our word justice from because this is right. Only God knows what is right. He is righteous. All right. And who deserves our praise and worship? Yes, only God, no one else, right? We have been talking about the prophets for these last many lessons. And the reason God had to send prophets to tell them to speak for him is because they weren't worshiping the one true God, were they? They were worshiping themselves false gods, idols, other things, other people, but not God, because only God deserves our praise and worship. And speaking of gods, we talked about other little gods. Is there more than one true God? No, there is only one, only one true God living, alive, living God, and that is Jesus, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All of those three. Everything else? Nope. Just one. The others can't hold a candle to the one true God. There's only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son, Jesus. And that's why we're here, because we want to learn as much as we can about Jesus and God, and we want to know how we can share him with other people so that they can know him too, because he is the only way. The one true God is the only way to have eternal life in heaven forever and ever, right? And we don't want our friends or our family to be anywhere else except with us in heaven forever. So let's get on to our lesson. Let's review what we did last week. Last week we met a prophet and his name was, who remembers? Jonah. Yes, he was a very famous prophet because uh, he disobeyed God, right? God gave him a message. He said, go where? 
to Nineveh, right? This way, Jonah said, I'm scared of those people. Those are wicked people. They are our enemy, have been our enemy. I don't want to go there. He tried to run away from God and went that way, right? Got on a boat. There was a bad storm. The crew threw him overboard because they knew that his God, the one true God, was causing that storm because Jonah was running away from him. They threw him overboard. The sea was silent, not a wave, not a wind. And then as soon as Jonah hit the water, this great big fish came up, swallowed Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of that fish for how long, remember? Three days and three nights. Yes, like someone else we talked about. Who else was three days and three nights? Yeah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jonah prayed to God, finally knew he wasn't going to be able to outrun God, and God heard his prayer forgave him, gave him another chance, right? God showed mercy to Jonah. That fish spit him out on the dry land. And Jonah went to that wicked city of Nineveh, preached what God wanted him to, the message that if they did not repent and turn from their wicked ways, that God was going to destroy the city. And much to Jonah's surprise, they repented. They turned from their evil ways and they started following the one true God. It was a miracle, a lot of miracles. God is always in the miracle business. So that's what we talked about last week was the story, was the history of Jonah. Right, And it only had four chapters in our Bible. The book of Jonah is only four chapters long. So if you missed it, this is the nutshell. I would go back and read it with your family this week because it kind of really relates to what we're going through in our world right now. Okay, And of course, we sang this song, You, out, you Cannot Outrun God. Because he is always with us. He is omniscient. He knows all things. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. There's nothing we can do to hide away from God. He knows where we are. And he loves us. It's not like he's trying to get us because he's mad at us. He wants to find us so we can do what he wants us to do for him, and so he loves us. All right, so today we're going to talk about how much God loves Israel. We've been talking about Israel ever since the, the kingdom of Israel was established, when Moses led all the Israelites out of Israel. Egypt, and he gave them the promised land, the 12 tribes set up. God has loved Israel from the very beginning. They were his chosen people, and we've talked about them when they've been good, when they've been bad. We've talked about their leaders, their kings, their enemies, the prophets, a lot about Israel, right? Because it's basically... The history of Israel is the Bible. So, today we're going to learn about another prophet that lived in Israel, and his name was Hosea. Hosea. And his life was full of emotions. Do you know what an emotion is? What? No, I did not say emoji. I said emotion. Well, you know, actually an emoji is kind of a cartoon picture of an emotion, right? That we use when we're 
texting because you can't see our facial expression that might go along with how we're feeling. So they made up little cartoon pictures that kind of show our emotions, our feelings, how we're feeling at any point in time, right? So Hosea had a lot of emotions. So it's how you feel. So show me, I want you to look right at your computer screen or your video screen and show Miss Christy what you look like when you are happy. Think Christmas morning or it's your birthday. You are happy. What's that face look like? A smile from one cheek over to the other cheek. The biggest smile, the crinkly eyes. Yes. Happy faces. I love seeing all those happy faces. Now what's the opposite of happy? Mm -hmm. Sad. Maybe something really sad happened to you and like you lost your favorite teddy bear and you can't find him or even more worse than that, your puppy dog got hit by a car and maybe had a broken leg and you had to take him to the vet to get fixed up. That's sad. Or maybe you had a balloon and it was a really windy day and oh, there it goes. And you lost it just as soon as you got it. Oh, that's sad, right? That's sad. Happy and sad. Those are emotions. Well, I want to see how well you know some emotions. So I have some emojis of some emotions. And these are all different emotions that Hosea felt while we talk about what happened to him as when he was prophet to Israel. So I want you to guess what these, I'm going to show you the picture of the emoji and... I want you to tell me what it is. All right. Okay, so here's the first one. Ooh, what do you think that one is? Mm -hmm. Let me hear ya. This one is worried. That's a worried face. Maybe an anxious face. Sometimes we feel worried or nervous or anxious, and we might be feeling those right now because being at school and, or maybe we're worried about an older grandparent or someone that may be sick. There's lots of things to be worried about, but we can always give it to God and he will take care of things. Here's another one. What do you think this emoji means? Oh, those squinty eyes. Yes, this is angry. That is angry. So Hosea was worried and he was angry. Hosea was also, oh, we did this one already. Sad. Yes, he was sad at one point. Oh, how about this one? What do you think this emoji is? Silly. Oh, who's silly? We can all be a little silly sometimes. And it's good to keep a sense of humor, right? Especially when things in our world are a little crazy or if we are worried, good laugh is good medicine. So sometimes we need to be a little silly. And here's another emoji of a feeling. Ooh, yes, this is cool. Of course, cool means content. That means you are satisfied. Everything's going good and you feel good. That's what content means. And here we go. What do you think this emoji means? Yeah, 
us. This means in love. Hard eyes. <laughs> this is in love. Hosea will be in love in our reading today from the Bible. What about this one? What do you think this emoji means? Surprise! Oh, yes, that is a surprise emoji. He will be surprised. And here is another one. Oh, what's this one? We started out with this one. This is happy face. Yes, it is. We had sad. We've got happy. We also have this one. Ooh, this might be a little tricky. This emotion, what do you think? This could be disappointed. Things didn't go the way you think they are gonna go. Or it could be jealous. You might want something that somebody else has. That's, those are not good emotions to have. And Here's the last emoji. What do you think this one means? Ooh, especially if it had red rosy cheeks, this one might mean embarrassed. Yes, it might be embarrassed. That was a lot of different emotions. And Hosea felt all of those different emotions. Sometimes in one day, we can feel all different kinds of emotions, but the thing to remember is not to let your emotions dictate. Even if you feel them, you don't have to act on them or you don't have to act on them in a bad way. You can choose to use them for good. Okay. All right. So, Let's get back to a little bit more about Hosea because we said this was a love story. We said that God loves Israel and Hosea loved Gomer. Oh, Gomer. Now, after God sent Amos, to Israel to warn the people of the punishment that was coming, the people went back to worshiping the false gods anyway. Remember Amos a couple lessons ago when we had the warning signs that he told them? There was the famine and the drought and the locusts. Remember all that? And the people would not turn from their wicked ways and then they ended up getting into captivity. Their kingdom was captured by the enemy kingdom and they were carried away, everyone. So the people, even after being carried away, they went back to worshiping false gods. So God sent Hosea with the same message for Israel, turn back to God. God wanted Israel to stop sinning and worship him, not the false gods. But this time, since they, Israel didn't get it when Amos just talked to them about it or shouted it about it, um, he thought he would show them through Hosea's life how God feels about them. So, God used Hosea's marriage to his wife, Gomer, as a picture of his love for Israel. So this is what happened, okay? God commanded Hosea to take a wife. Hosea obeyed and married a woman named Gomer, and they had three children. Hosea loved Gomer. He cared for her and provided for her everything that she needed. 
But then, <gasps> shocker, Gomer left Hosea, packed up and left. Hmm. She didn't love him anymore and thought she would be happier with someone else. <gasps> There's some emotions there. He just went from love to shock, surprised, and then probably really angry at her for doing that, right? And then also really sad at the same time. What a terrible time for Hosea. Hosea's heart was broken by the way Gomer had treated him. She had sinned against him by breaking her marriage promises. Most people would feel sad and hurt or maybe angry if that happened to them. It is not fun to feel that way. But then God gave Hosea a surprising command. He said, go and take your wife back and love her again. Wow. Wow, after she just left, God wanted Hosea to just go get her and bring her back. That was a hard command to obey. But Hosea did it. He went and found Gomer and he brought her back to be his wife again. He loved her and he forgave her for leaving him. When the people in Israel saw how Hosea God's prophet took his wife back after she had been so mean to him. They began to understand how God feels about them. God loved his people like Hosea loved his wife. Let's find out what God said to them. Okay, so let's go to our Bibles. Let's open them up and we are going to find Hosea. Okay, so you can flip through. If you have a bookmark from where we were last week in Jonah, actually you can go backwards a few pages and you will find Hosea or an easy way to use our Bibles is to just go to the table of contents in the front, right? Find the page number and flip there. Don't be afraid to use the table of contents. That's what it's there for. Or if you like a great way to find the different books in your Bible is you can use little page tabs or markers, stickers you can put on there. So every book you can put a little sticker and you can flip to it. They sell them with the names of the book right on there or you can write them on yourself. And that's a good way to get to know your Bible. Obviously reading it is the best way and just spending time with it, doing different things, looking through it, you know, organizing it. All right, so we're in Hosea. That should have given you some time. And we are going to be in chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2, okay? Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. People of Israel, listen to the Lord's message. Okay, this is Hosea. He's the prophet, right? So he's telling this to all of the people. People of Israel, listen to the Lord's message. The Lord says he has this against you. 
who live in this country. The people are not true, not loyal to God. They do not even know him. They curse. They lie. They kill. They steal. They are guilty of adultery. They break all my laws. One murder follows another. Hmm. Wow. I don't know about you, but that doesn't just sound like Hosea's time. That kind of sounds like what's going on the news right now, doesn't it? Yeah, the Bible's the same. It was written for the people back in Bible times, but a lot of it, the message of it, is still applied today, especially from the prophets. So, so whose word was that? Hosea was reading it, but who was speaking it to Hosea? The Lord, yes, he was telling Hosea what to speak, what to say directly from the Lord. The Lord was angry with his people. Angry emoji for the Lord. He said he had a controversy, he had a big problem with them. There were three very important things that were missing in the land of Israel. So, do you remember what those were that we read? If you got your Bible open, you can look back there in verse 1 and see what those three very important things, very important things to God, and they were missing in his people. So what was the first thing that was missing? Yes, the people had no faithfulness. They were not faithful to God. Right? And then the second thing that was missing? Love. Right? Love. They did not love the Lord. And that broke the Lord's heart. And what was the third thing? It said they had no knowledge of the Lord. Yes, so they weren't faithful. They didn't love God. They didn't even know about him. After all he's done for the people of Israel, all the miracles he's done in the past, they stopped telling each other about it. They did not even know the word of the Lord. They didn't know God anymore. They didn't love him anymore. And they turned away from him and worshipped false gods. But there was more to this problem in verse 2. It talked about all the other things they did not do or they did do that were wrong, right? When we look at our Ten Commandments, a lot of these were in there, right? Swearing, lying, murder, adultery, which is being unfaithful to your wife or to your husband. Yeah, these things are bad, and these people were doing them. The people of Israel were sinning against God just as Gomer was sinning against Hosea. Gomer was unfaithful when she left him. And the people of Israel were unfaithful.
faithful to God when they turned to other false gods. Hosea was going through the same thing with his wife that God was going through with his people. The pain and the sadness that Hosea felt because of Gomer was how God felt when his people turned away from him. Sin had separated Gomer from Hosea and sin had separated the Israelites from their God, from the one true God. Even though the Israelites continued to sin and worshipped false gods, God still loved them. He had a special love for Israel. He still has a special love for Israel. They were and are his chosen people. He had brought them out of slavery in Egypt and he had given them the promised land. We talked about that in the lessons long ago. So after all the great blessings, every miracle and everything God had given to his people, how did they treat him? They just kicked him out, kicked the out, old out, and in with the new. Forgot all about everything he had done for them. Let's see what this new thing will be like. Let's see what happened. Let's go back to our Bibles, but we're going to go, we're going to leave chapter 4 and go over to chapter 11. So let's turn a couple pages. And we are going to go to verse 7. So chapter 11, verse 7. So let's see what the Lord said here. Okay? It says, and this is the Lord speaking through Hosea, remember. My people have made up their minds to turn away from me. The prophets call them to turn to me, but none of them honors me at all. And we'll read verse 8. Israel, I don't want to give you up. I don't want to go away and leave you. I don't want to make you like Adma. I don't want to treat you like Zebulim, okay, other countries nearby. My heart beats for you. My love for you stirs up my pity. Hmm. So it says that the people were bent on turning away from God. They just kept turning away from God. No matter how much God loved them, they just look the other way. Was this good for the people of Israel to keep turning away from God? No, 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 it's not good. God loves the people, and he always wants what's best for them, for you, for me. But they kept turning away. But because God loved them so much, he wanted to forgive them for their sins. So he showed them mercy by sending his prophets. We've been talking about the prophets for weeks. God sent his prophets to show them what to do so that he could forgive them. But he also would warn them that if they didn't do it, 
then they would have to be punished because God has to punish sin. The people did not listen to the prophet's warnings. And because God is just, he had to punish them for their sin. God said that he would send an enemy to punish Israel by capturing the people and taking them away. But he still gave the people hope. The enemy would come, but there would be a time when the people would come back and worship God, and God would forgive them. Do you see how Hosea and his wife were a picture of how God loves Israel? Even though she sinned against Hosea, he took her back, he forgave her, he gave her another chance, he loved her again, and he promised to take care of her. And the Lord loved his people the same way. God loves each of us with that same love way a deep deep love how much did he love did he love his people how much does he love us he loves us so much that he yes sent his only son to die on the cross for our sins and when we believe in him, he will forgive us and give us eternal life. Sound familiar? That's how much God loves us. That was his plan all along for his people when they wouldn't listen. He will save us from our sins. Jesus can save us from our sins. Let's pray. Can we pray? Dear God, thank you for the great picture of your love you showed us through Hosea's love for his unfaithful wife. Despite all our sin, and we do sin, Lord, and we're sorry, each and every day we do, but you still feel compassion and mercy toward us. May we be quick to repent and return to you when our hearts wander away from you first. Lord, may each one of the passengers Draw near to you in love. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. This is what your homework is. For the younger class, here's your take-home sheet for the Adirondack Mountaineers. We got a coloring sheet there, too, with the Justin and Jesse story. There's a game called Come Back to Me, and you can play this with your parents or your members of your family. And here is a craft, a mobile that says God loves us that you can hang up at home. All right, that'd be a great thing to hang in your bedroom to remind yourself of how much God loves you, how much he loves you. And we have... a. Uh, well, we will, hold on one second. There will be the class notes for the Durango drivers. And it looks like this, okay? It, compa it compares Hosea and Gomer's life to God and Israel. It compares them, right? That's what we did in our lesson. We looked how they were the same. And in the middle is a picture 
where you can draw. There's the words. You It'll be the same word. We'll answer both sides. And then you can draw a picture there, like a heart or a broken heart or a sad face, kind of like your own emojis, right? You can draw your own emojis in here. Um, this one is separated, so you could draw Gomer and Jose, Gomer and Hosea and kind of draw a line down the middle while they were separated and then show them at the end because they were in love because he took her back and God always will take us back when we ask. So you could so and there's also a coloring sheet. Okay, as well as the take-home sheet. So, we hope you have a great week. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, practice that memory verse because we've only got a couple weeks left so I can give you the CDs. Are you ready? Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, have fun. Bye-bye. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.